They did it. They actually did it. The WWE fouled through on something that they should have. They absolutely should have. And this all even goes back to Elimination Chamber and once Bobby Lashley got involved and roughed up Drew McIntyre and helped The Miz become the new WWE Champion. A lot of you have been counting down the days and chomping at the bit for this to happen. That Bobby Lashley would become the new WWE Champion. And last night on Raw, that's just what happened. So, obviously... A lot of people are pretty excited about it. It's a pretty big deal. Not just somebody winning the world championship. That's a big deal in and of itself. Always is. But the fact that it's somebody like Bobby Lashley, who has waited that many years to actually get to this spot. So, it is a big deal. And I know some of you, I can already see it in the comments, are going to say that I'm just an industrial grade, industrial size cuck for black wrestlers. And of course I would be happy for him because he's a black man winning the world title. Let's get a couple of things clear here. Number one, if you don't think Battletoad Bobby Lashley is worthy of being the WWE champion right now, you are a fucking clown. Number two, not only just himself, as a legit badass, both as an accomplished professional wrestler and in the mixed martial arts world, he does he have credibility, but he also has credibility with the Hurt Business faction. And you say, what's the difference between him and let's say a Drew McIntyre? Um, one, I think Bobby Lashley is even more believable. But two, he freaking has MVP that he's associated with. So he's got the built-in credible mouthpiece. The accomplished mouthpiece. The guy that can help get him over. He's got the faction. Like, he's got a lot of things. So it absolutely, positively makes sense that a guy like Bobby Lashley, a legit badass, both in the professional wrestling and mixed martial arts worlds, would be somebody that you would eventually put the WWE Championship or the Universal Championship, whichever one is on the show that he's on, you would eventually want to put it on the Battletoads' waist. It's not that hard to see. So yeah, I'm happy they did it. And I know I was saying during the show Monday night, maybe it was in some ways to not jinx it. In some ways it was also trying to tone things down and not get, let people get too excited just in case they were getting disappointed. But I had said that I really wish this moment would have happened at a WrestleMania. And I stand by that. I would rather have this have been something that happened at WrestleMania because there's enough story there, there's enough history there, it's a big enough deal uh, that it should happen at the Showcase of Immortals. That said, the way they did it last night worked. It gave you something to sink into and feel like you were invested in throughout the course of all three hours of Raw, which we far too often have not gotten for years now. People had a reason to be emotionally invested in Raw last night. And isn't it amazing when you have a reason to be emotionally invested, how much better it is? It's an important lesson for everybody when it comes to professional wrestling. It's the characters, the stories, the moments, the emotional attachments and invent investments. Those are the things that matter, not the moves and the freaking matches. It just doesn't. Those don't matter nearly as much. And while I would have rather have seen this happen at WrestleMania, who am I to stand in the way of somebody that should have long since before been WWE Champion finally getting that honor, finally getting that opportunity? Fuck, it just came at a different time than I personally would have done it. That's okay. It's absolutely okay. But I think the bigger concern for me with that was talking about them not doing it and saying, I want them to wait until WrestleMania is because I fear what could potentially be coming. And I beg WWE, I implore WWE, please, don't get stupid. Don't, don't, don't undercut yourself to be morons or try to prove a point or get number two Drew, his WrestleMania moment in some front of some fans. No. Now that you put the fucking belt on Bobby Lashley, he needs a run 
of some length. And that is not some length until the second weekend in April in WrestleMania. No, it goes longer and at least several months longer than that. To this whole notion that Drew McIntyre should win the belt back at WrestleMania because he's their guy and he's the one and they want to make sure that he gets his big WrestleMania moment. You know what? Tough shit. He didn't do enough as the champion. And you say, well, it's hard to blame it on just one individual. That is true. But there was nothing truly that you look at and say that he so significantly moved the needle that you should be in any big massive rush to put the title back on him. Absolutely not. How many times you got to put the title back on him to realize, hey, this crap isn't fully connecting and fully resonating in the way that you wish. And you're in a situation here where it's okay to get experimental. You're already kind of devaluing television ratings as it is, at least domestically here in the United States, because you're focusing more on overall exposure in terms of viewership in international markets. You're focusing on the upcoming transition to Peacock as part of that billion dollar deal. You've got big money deals with NBC Universal for Raw and then for Fox with SmackDown. You know, and, and you look at this and you say, this is the perfect time to be experimental. You can afford to take chances. You can afford to take risks because A, you got a shit ton of security that a lot of other wrestling companies, if they were in this spot, or just a lot of other businesses in general don't have. You have a tremendous amount of cushion to play with. Like that's when it could get really exciting. That's when you can sit there and do your biggest, boldest things. And some of them will fail and they will strike out miserably. Now, man, if you connect on a couple of them, you can really, really, really do something big for the long term. So you've got that. You've got that built-in cushion where you can be flexible. And, and again, like from a viewership standpoint, it's not going to get much worse. So it's time to expand and grow your audience. You can come back to Drew someday, but this is not his time. It is Bobby Lashley's time. This is the right thing to do. And I know a lot of fans probably sit there and feel very happy about this. And believe me, I am absolutely ecstatic about this. I'm incredibly happy about this. And it's, again, not because he's just a black wrestler. It's because of the fact that a legit badass is now WWE champion. And when I look at Raw and SmackDown, I say, holy Christ. You've got a legit badass and Bobby Lashley is the champion on one show and a legit badass and Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, is the champion on the other show. Like, that's fucking awesome. You got two guys that feel like believable, legit, credible, alpha male type of world champs. Why the hell wouldn't we be down for that? It just also so happens that it's a bit of history. This is part of the reason why I could say, yeah, it happened on Raw, so technically more people watch it, which is true. Um, so maybe that matters, but you know, title changes like this, historic things, should happen at pay-per-views, specifically signature Big Four pay-per-views, and whenever possible at WrestleMania, like it did with Kofi Mania a couple of years ago. You know, like it's not always going to work out that way. I understand that, but you were in a position where you could have strung it out and you could have played it out until then. And I really, really wish they would have, but they did. But they didn't. But this is a historic thing. That's not necessarily something we should be proud of. The WWE shouldn't be proud of it. Wrestlers shouldn't be proud of it. Wrestling fans shouldn't be proud of it. You're talking about Bobby Lashley and his win last night. He's only the third black WWE champion in company history. Third. Third. You talk about The Rock and Kofi. And now Bobby Lashley. And inevitably, here comes the asshole in the comments talking about Booker T and Mark Henry. No disrespect to them. Worthy world champions. That wasn't the WWE championship. That's the World Heavyweight Championship. Period. It's a difference. It didn't even have the company's name on it. This one does. This one is the top belt in WWE from a historical lens, a historical standpoint. It's their traditional world championship. And the fact 
that it's now 2021 and after all these years of all the wrestlers of all shapes and sizes and colors and backgrounds and everything else, we are now talking about our whopping third ever black WWE champion is despicable and pathetic. We can celebrate the fact that it happened. We can celebrate the fact that a good business decision was made, that talent was being recognized, that we've got now a second legit badass world champion in WWE. We can celebrate all those things. We can celebrate being happy for Bobby Lashley and the time that it took to get here. Uh, but we should not be doing handsprings and backflips and back padding for WWE for making this decision. Because this probably should have happened with Lashley a while ago. And you could argue over a decade ago. So one, why would you celebrate them for taking way too fucking long to do the right thing? That's not worth celebrating. Number two, when you look at the lineage and the history again, this is not something to be proud of. And if this company wants to get more in touch with modern time and they want to be more inclusive and engaging for other types of fan bases, if they want to come across as more believable and more realistic in terms of the athletic competitions that they have. Only the WWE thinks that featuring a sport of mostly white guys is going to be believable. And you, some of you might think that that's not a big deal, but it is. It absolutely is. If it's not a sport like fucking hockey or maybe baseball, when you talk about white athletes, there is a stigma attached. Fair or not, it's there. We all freaking know it is, so let's not pretend that it's not. So now you've got a chance here. A believable badass, one that you can take seriously, that's not doing clown shit, that's not sitting there and doing the stereotype type of stuff that Vince would freaking love. Like he, him and MVP are doing the crap that I wish New Day would have done years ago. Like this is a little bit closer to what I would have envisioned for them and what I wanted them to do. But we've got it now. You need to validate this by giving them a good run at the top because what the fuck else do you have to lose? You put the belt back on Drew at WrestleMania, it feels like everything is just a gigantic waste of time and you're going to risk overexposing just how much you're forcing Drew, number two, down everybody's damn throats and up their poopers. You can always come back to it someday if you want. But here is a chance to give Lashley some real momentum. Here is a chance to really get Lashley over. Here is a chance to establish him as your top guy on Raw in 2021. He needs to go to WrestleMania and beat Drew McIntyre clean. One, two, three. Now, I will back up from that and say, I think that's personally a waste of fucking time. Now, might as well just have him face off at Fastlane so you can get to where the real business would be which was you fork over more money and you bring in Brock Lesnar and you get Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at WrestleMania and Brock puts over fucking Bobby Lashley. Why would he be opposed to that? I don't know. He put over Seth Rollins fucking twice. You can't tell me that it makes any sense that he'd have a problem putting over a legit badass like Bobby Lashley once. That's the real money match. I'm Drew. But if you're going to do Drew versus Lashley at Mania, Lashley needs to walk in the champ and he needs to leave the champ. Independent of what happens with Edge and Roman, whether you have the tribal chief retain or not. Now that you put the belt on him, he needs a run. Because you really need to test the waters to see just how well it works with him at the top. And sitting there, and putting the strap on him for six, seven weeks, ain't gonna get the fucking job done. You wanna put the belt on somebody for six or seven weeks? Well then shit, you should've just kept it on the Miz and have him go all the way to Mania as a champion and Lashley squash him in a quick fucking hurry. That's what you should've done if you were gonna do that. No, Lashley's got it now. He needs to keep it. SummerSlam minimum, maybe even Survivor Series, but at least through SummerSlam. Having him drop it to do Drew, number two, at Mania, would feel like the type of crap that you wish was one of the opening matches on night one or night two and be one that you would just get really pissed off about because you know it just signified they're forcing Drew and everything is a waste of fucking time.
Don't waste everybody's time, WWE, including Lashley's and including yours. Now you've went there, you've got to really follow through and go there. 